My name is Hopeton Sinclair Hibbert Jr. I've been a career culinary artist for the last 20 years and that kind of transcended into what I do now. Um, I'm a multimedia artist working with acrylics, paints, sculpture, um, as much as I can in, in, in the art medium. And I've just been a naturally creative person. Uh, my mother was in the art. She used to make jewelry, polymer clay, and calligraphy. So as a child, I was immersed in it, not knowing I'd be where I am now doing what I'm doing. Um, so I think uh, I've, I've kind of always been involved in the arts, and it's just kind of coming to fruition now with with uh, my multimedia art. I'm from New Jersey, Plainfield, New Jersey, born, raised in Hillsborough, New Jersey, and the last about 25 years of my life I've been in Atlanta. Being in Atlanta now is helping my creativity a bit more. Like I said, last 20 years I've been in the culinary world. I've been locked in a kitchen, doing my artistic expression through food. And now that I've been able to step out of that world, be immersed in the city, meet people, um, visit art galleries, to see the art world more firsthand and experience it, it helped my inner creative go outside of the kitchen, if that makes sense. And and now that Atlanta is kind of bubbling now, like 20 years ago, it definitely wasn't what it is now. Atlanta's still a new city, um, a lot of new construction. You know, Atlanta burnt down many years ago and they rebuilt the city and it, it just still a growing city now. And so a lot of things weren't popping back then, you know, um, definitely not as much as it is now, be it because of gentrification or whatever the case may be. But you know, now it's just a lot more opportunities, I think, um, for, for at least for my creative expression. The transition hasn't been challenging because I haven't really been in it long enough to experience any real hiccups or hurdles. It's more been a learning experience at this point. Um, I'm still very new in this art world, especially on the business side. Um, I've really been focusing on production at this point and just being a prolific artist, utilizing the space that I have now in my life. Um, but moving into the business side, I see that it runs pretty parallel to culinary arts. And, and really, any I think in general, most art scenes kind of run parallel. The business of the arts kind of run parallel. You have creative people who their minds work in a creative world and not in the business world. Then you have the people who, the opposite, their minds work in the business world and they're trying to figure out how to make money off the artists. So with that being said, it's always a, a funny balancing act in any art field, whether it be culinary arts, um, music, music arts, uh, any art field, I, I think those kind of run in parallel. But from my experience, um, again, I haven't run across any real hiccups, but I, I'm not deep in it yet enough to, to really say. But from my, what I've seen so far, it's, it's, it's very similar. You know, there's always gonna be that person who's, who has an opportunity to, to put artists on and to, to cater to that artist, but yet, take advantage and not always take advantage but just have the upper hand because they have access to where the art needs to go so i think that's always going to be in play until artists get to a point where they can manage manage their career themselves which is always going to be a challenge because the artist wants to focus on the art so trying to do all those things tends to pull away from the artist's creativity you know, it's, it's you only have two hands. If you're trying to do business with one hand, you can't paint with the other as comfortably as you think you might be able to. So it's, it's kind of trying to find that balance. Um, and so that's that's what I'm trying to find now, just find that balance between the business side and the artistic side. Mm -hmm. so definitely, and I think that's what most artists would look for because again, they may not, they may not even, I'm exaggerating, but they may not even be able to read a contract. But yet, but they can paint a fabulous, maybe million dollar painting, you know, so there's got to be that balance. And, it's, and, and speaking for myself, I'd much rather 
have somebody on my side that I trust to be able to help navigate that business side and just be like, hey, you focus on producing this work. I need 20 pieces from you in this month. You just worry about that and I'll make sure when that's done, it has a place to go. I think every artist looks for that. Not to say artists can't do both, because I'm sure there's artists out there that can manage and do the art. And you know, some minds just work that way. Mine doesn't. <laughs> I like to focus on the art, you know, uh, and being creative. Definitely, just I think um, just the social, social aspect of it. And I'm definitely not talking about social media. I think going out, meeting other artists, sitting down, having a drink with artists. Um, just networking in general, talking to people in the art world, that's what I've done. I'm, I'm a pretty social butterfly, so I have no problem going to a gallery opening, um, being a part of those kind of events, talking to artists, talking to people who like art, and just expanding your understanding of the art world from multiple angles. Um, and, and just letting that be, be the educational aspect of it. Um, I find that to be very helpful. Because uh, again, I'm, I'm doing this, I don't know everything, but I'm not trying to know everything, but I do like getting perspectives from other people and, and, and helping that to guide me in my process. And, and I would suggest that for other artists. You know, a lot of times we are the opposite of social butterflies and we like to be very inclusive and, and or not inclusive, but uh, antisocial and just be in our bubble and, and focus on our craft. And, and when we get outside in these environments, when we have our shows, we tend to hide in the corner and wait for someone to call our name. And, and then here we are, here I am. You know, we're very shy about that once it comes to presenting the art. But I think not only will that help you as an artist to learn more, but it also helps people want to people wanna invest in you. It's not just your painting. That the, it's something you put into that painting is what makes somebody want to purchase it. So it helps you to understand how to deliver your story, how to tell how to tell these people what, why you created something. And that's, that's really what people want to buy into. They want to buy into your character. So if you don't really have a strong character, uh, what are they buying? You know, these people are spending thousands and millions of dollars on a painting, not to just say it's on their wall, but they want to be able to explain to somebody why you have a million dollars on your wall. Not just because I like red, you know, because the artist did this, this, and this, and I can tell a story about this artist, you know, and that's 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 a very important part of this this game that I think is uh, is important because it's I think from the surface it looks like it's just about the art, but really people are buying buying into a character because the people who can afford this don't have that character in them. These people aren't the creative minds like the artists are, and that's again that's the balance, you know, that they have the money to support that. But you know, it's like any other luxury. You know, you you can't build a Ferrari, but you want to drive one. So <laughs> so you pay that premium so you can so you can get out there and, and, and have your have your have your luxury, whatever that be.